Hi, I'm Stacy from the blog, The From Scratch Farmhouse, and I am so excited for today's video because I'm going to be sharing my absolute favorite homemade ice cream recipe. This was not taken from anywhere. This was something that I created after trying many different recipes and methods last summer. And today I'm going to be sharing with you all of my ice cream secrets. If you're new here, I'm Stacy, homeschooling and homesteading mama of seven on a mission to ditch the grocery store and become more self-sufficient. Subscribe to our channel to learn more about our journey and how we were making that dream come true. Today's video is also part of a collaboration for Dairy Month here on YouTube, where a bunch of homesteading YouTubers are going to be posting content around the area of dairy all month. And the hosts of this event are the Inquisitive Farmwife and the Mennonite Farmhouse, but I will leave the full schedule of all the channels participating in the description. Okay, before we get started, let me just admit that I am extremely picky when it comes to ice cream. It happens to be my favorite food, and so when I started making it at home, I was very disappointed by how a lot of the recipes turned out. Either the texture was wrong or the taste was wrong, or when we put it in the freezer, it tasted fine before we put it in the freezer, but when we took it out, it had formed ice crystals, it wasn't scoopable, it just wasn't the right texture after freezing. And I knew that for our large family, in order for it to be a sustainable habit of us making all of our ice cream, I needed to be able to make it ahead of time. So I continued to play with recipes until I came up with this one, and you are going to be so pleased. The taste, texture, even after freezing, are amazing. And in the spirit of Dairy Month, we're gonna start out in the barn where we get our milk and cream. And yes, you can buy store-bought milk and cream for this, and if you'd rather just skip to the recipe, you can do that below. But I'm gonna take you out there and show you our miniature Jersey cow and how we get our cream and milk for this recipe. We have a miniature Jersey cow named Jan. She calved a little over a year ago and she still produces a ton of cream. And by the way, if you've ever thought we can't get a cow because we don't have a barn, well, here's proof that you don't need much. We have been milking in this makeshift shelter milking parlor for a year and it has worked just fine. Of course, we're very excited to someday have a real barn, but don't let not having the perfect setup stop you. To add to the chaos, we now have three Idaho pasture pigs sharing this barn, which makes keeping it clean feel impossible. I will have to do a whole video on them because we are loving these pigs. However, they will not be invited into our new milking area in our new barn. I am hand milking here, which we don't normally do. Honestly, I thought it sounded easier on this particular day than cleaning all of the milking equipment, but I was quickly reminded how nice the machine is, not because I mind the actual process of milking by hand, but because the closed system really helps keep the milk clean in this less than sanitary situation. Also, my kids are normally the ones milking and it's easier for them to use the machine and then I do the cleaning and processing. So we will definitely be going back to the machine milker until we have a better setup. Oh, and I did just try to milk her in the field, which would have been cleaner in theory, but the pigs were messing with her and she wouldn't stay still. So all of this to say, Nothing about our setup is ideal, but we make it work. I'd say for every gallon of milk, we get about three cups to a quart of cream. Some days we get much more than that, which is really just partially good luck. Cow's production of cream depends on a lot of factors, including the state of their lactation, breed, diet, and more. Other things we make with our milk are cheeses of all kinds, butter, buttermilk, creamer, and many of these recipes can either be found here on my YouTube channel or over on Instagram. But if there's a specific dairy recipe that you'd like to see, please let me know in the description. So once we have our milk and it's been strained, we generally need to leave it overnight for the cream to rise to the top. This allows us to ladle it off for recipes like this. When it's just for drinking, we just give it a shake to make sure the cream is mixed in. We don't drink skimmed milk because the whole milk is much healthier. All right, now that you've seen the process of getting our milk, let's dive into this homemade ice cream recipe. To make the recipe, you will need heavy cream, whole milk, granulated sugar, fine sea salt, large egg yolks, gelatin powder, and vanilla extract. And then I'm making peppermint ice cream here, so I'm adding peppermint extract. But the wonderful thing about this recipe is that you can use it as a base to add in the extracts or ingredients of your choice to make whatever flavor you want to make. You will also need an instant read thermometer, a blender, a sieve is nice but not mandatory, and an ice cream maker. Last year we upgraded to this larger, more expensive machine and I love the fact that you don't have to freeze the inner canister like you do with others. And the biggest perk to this is that I can do two batches back to back. But if you're on a budget, I recommend the Cuisinart that we had before, and I will link both in the description. The first step in making the ice cream is to add one cup whole milk, one cup heavy cream, two thirds cup of sugar, 
and an eighth teaspoon of fine sea salt to a medium saucepan. Keep in mind that altering the amount of sugar is going to change the texture and taste significantly, so feel free to play with this recipe so that it works for your family's preferences, but I make zero guarantees unless you follow this recipe exactly. The other cup of cream is going to get poured into a bowl, and then you will sprinkle one and a half teaspoons of gelatin powder over the cream. I accidentally did a tablespoon here, so do what I say and not what I did. I'm so used to doubling the recipe. Don't mix it in yet, it needs to bloom. I buy my gelatin powder in bulk from Azure Standard, but you can also purchase it online. Do not skip this step since the gelatin is really the magic ingredient. Next, you're going to whisk and heat that mixture until it gets hot. If you can't hold your finger in it, it's good. Meanwhile, you can separate your egg yolks. I also take the time to pinch off the little white stringy anchors that are there to hold the yolk in the center of the egg. They won't hurt a thing, but whenever I'm being picky about texture, I remove them. Okay, so your cream mixture is hot and your egg yolks are in a small bowl. You are now going to temper the eggs by slowly whisking in about a half cup of the hot cream into the egg yolks. Without stopping whisking, you then simply add the egg and cream mixture back to the pot. Do this very slowly. This process ensures that the eggs don't cook while heating them. Otherwise, you'll end up with scrambled eggs in your ice cream. If you're wondering if you can skip heating the mixture because you like to keep your raw milk raw, yes, but heating it both pasteurizes the eggs, which if you're buying store-bought eggs, you might wanna do, and it does thicken the mixture and improve the texture. Now, while whisking, you're going to slowly bring the mixture up to 165 degrees Fahrenheit. Then, whisk the gelatin into the cream, and add the cream and gelatin mixture to the pot and mix to combine. Don't worry if there are a few clumps at this point, they will get taken care of. Now slowly bring the mixture up to 170 degrees Fahrenheit, whisking the entire time. This should only take a few minutes. Then remove the pan from the heat and add in your extracts of choice. I'm making peppermint ice cream, which is my favorite, so I'm adding one teaspoon peppermint extract and half teaspoon vanilla extract. Whisk to combine. Now pour the mixture into a blender. I like to pour it through a sieve at this point just to make sure there are no little bits of cooked egg or anything that's going to ruin the texture, but it's definitely not mandatory. Your ice cream mixture is now complete. It just needs to cool before running it through your ice cream maker. I just pop the entire blender into the fridge. After it is nice and chilled, I blend the mixture until it is smooth. This makes it turn out so much better. Since this is a single batch of ice cream, I can pour the whole thing into my ice cream maker. However, normally I do a double batch, and so I'd pour half of the mixture that's in the blender in at a time, put the rest in the refrigerator, and then blend and repeat the process later. Then I select the ice cream making setting and set it to 45 minutes. But keep in mind that every ice cream maker works a little differently, so make sure to read your manual for the optimum settings and time. Also, if I was going to add in any ingredients like chocolate chips, I'd add this after it has run in the machine for a few minutes. This way it doesn't all sink to the bottom and gets distributed evenly. After the time is up, I transfer the mixture to my favorite ice cream containers, which I've had these for years and I will link them below, and then immediately pop them into the freezer. You can eat it right out of the machine, but I really like the more firm and even texture that comes from freezing it. Don't worry if at this point there are some areas that seem kind of runny and thawed and then there's some harder areas. That is why freezing it is a really good idea first just so that it's all consistent in texture. I've tried just running it in the machine longer, but then it gets more difficult to remove. So this will really depend on how big of a hurry you're in to have it done. I hope your family loves this homemade ice cream recipe as much as we do. If you try it out, tell me what you thought or what flavor variation you made in the description. I'm off to go enjoy the sunshine. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you here next week.